Hello guys, my name is Corey Lee, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, as you can tell by the title, I am actually going to get a breast reduction. I don't know how I'm going to start this video off, but um, it's 11.37 on a Wednesday night. My surgery is tomorrow at 12 o'clock in the noon, and I'm nervous as hell. So I already did the video like, already explaining this, but I'm going to do another one just in case I don't like the first one. I can use this one. So I guess if you're seeing this one, I didn't like the first one. So that's what I'm doing this one. So um, I already did my hair. This is the hair set that we're going in with. This should hopefully last me about four to six weeks because that's how long I'm, I, well, I don't know how long I'm not gonna be able to lift my arms above my head. But um, we're just gonna get into the breast reduction like topics. So first off, um, I decided I wanted to get a breast reduction maybe last week of August. I um, had my first consultation August 29th with um, my surgeon, Dr. Finney George. Um, he's all the way down in Manhattan, but he has a few other branches in um, New York. So um, yeah, he's with Long Island Plastical Surgical Group. Long Island Plastic Surgical Group. I said plastical, I don't know. So I had my consultation with him. I had three surgeons picked out. Um, that I wanted to go through that I went through for my insurance list because originally I was going to do it through my insurance but we are paying out of pocket which we will get into later so um I had three surgeons picked up that I wanted to do it with through the insurance obviously I went like on your you know you can go to your provider's website and they'll show you whoever will you know work with their insurance and yada 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 um so I found three he was the first one that I went to and he wound up being the last one that I went to I didn't want to go to anybody else he made me feel so comfortable. He answered every single question. I just knew like instantly in my gut, like this is the person I wanted to do my birth reduction. And I feel like when you're going to your consultations, you want to find somebody who gives you that feeling because you have to understand they're going to be literally working inside of you and doing a make or break situation. Like these are your breasts. People see your breasts all the time, especially if big breasts, you know, like that's like the first thing people see about you is that your breasts are big. So you want somebody who's going to handle them with care. You don't want somebody who's just going to be doing whatever for that paycheck. You get what I'm saying? So, um, I specifically, you know, chose my doctor. We did the consultation. I think maybe after a week after the consultation, I sent a deposit and I booked my, um, surgery date, which is tomorrow, October 27th. So back to, we're going to um, talk about the insurance because I know that's something that, um, a lot of people actually want to know about when it comes to the breast reductions is how you get insurance to cover it, things like that. What I would recommend is that whoever is thinking about it, if you're even just slightly thinking about it, go to your doctor and start complaining about, you know, back pains and things like that because insurance is only going to uncover, it's only going to, what did, I, what did I say? It's only going to cover your breast reduction if this is deemed as medically necessary. Now, they're not going to do it because you say, I don't like the way it looks in my shirts. I don't like, you know, the way people stare at me. I don't like the size they are. I don't think it fits my body. Like, they don't give they don't give a flying, yeah. Like, they don't care. They want to know that you're in physical pain and they're just going to alleviate your pain. That's your insurance's job, is to alleviate your pain. So, they need to make sure that your pain is being alleviated, that's all. So when you go to the doctor and you start complaining and letting them know, um, I know for the most part they told me I needed, um, well, my surgeon's letter would be one and then I would need two other doctor's recommendations so I only had one which would have been my gyno because I used to complain to my breast um to him about my breast to him um and then I would need somebody else which can be like a physical therapist a chiropractor anybody um but the thing is some insurances require a time that it has to be done some insurances will just take the letters and go on about the day and go cool you know we'll do it some want to see that you've tried other results to solve it and surgery be the last resort. My insurance just so happened to be one of those insurances that wanted to be the last resort. So meaning, you know, did you try losing weight? Did you try physical therapy? Did you try going to a chiropractor? Did you try medication? Like they want to know everything and then surgery is like, okay, now we'll cover it for you. So I'd recommend that if you want to, you start that process just in case. So that way when you go to a surgeon and get a consultation, you already have those papers. You can go to those doctors and they can write off the form, send it right off to your insurance, and more than likely you will get accepted. Depending on your insurance, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an insurance company. I don't know. But this is just from my experience and from other people I know's experience, that's typically what it seems like the pattern here is. You know what I mean? Um, I decided I wasn't going to go through with that because I didn't want to wait 
a year, two years, three years for my insurance to play the mind games with me because they do it all the time. And um, I just decided, listen, I want to get it done. I knew I wanted to get it done since I was about maybe 18 years old. Um, and back then I was a triple D. Now I'm a 36H, which is the H stands for hell no. And I'm hoping to go down to a 36C. I want to go to a full C. I've been thinking about a D, but I think a D might be too big. Like what if I gain weight? I don't know. So I think C might be the best option for me. Cause you know, the thing is a C looks different on everybody. So I can't really look at any pictures. I don't know for sure how a C will look on me, but I want it, I still want it to be full. So when I see him tomorrow, we'll discuss that. We already discussed it at my pre-op, so he's aware, but um, that's what I want. I still, I want like a full C. Like you, like you know I got some nice breasts, but I don't want them to be like boom in your face like they are now. You get what I'm saying? So with that being said about, you know, me not going through the insurance. Um, also another thing was that I didn't like is that I've been, I heard some people say it and my doctor also mentioned it about some, some insurances will decide how much they want um, to take out of your breast. Like you won't really have a lot of control over it. Some of them will say, you know, well, great, we'll pay for the surgery, but um, we're only gonna pay for 500 grams to be removed from her breast because according to her weight and everything that we determined, that'll be just enough fat taken out for us to alleviate her pain. You know what I mean? And sometimes you might get the 500 grams taken out, but you might have more grams of fat in your breast than you really know. And that they, you know, cause obviously they can't see how much grams of fat is in your breast by looking at them. So you might have more grams of fat in your breast than you even know. And then when they actually do the surgery, they're like, oh my gosh, and then 500 grams takes you down from an H to whatever before is, I don't know, my... To a G, because that's right before H. So, it's like, you don't really know. And it's like, I feel like if I wait so long, I don't want my insurance to do that to me. <laughs> and then like, they send me down to something that's either far too small or not really what I want or far too big or, you know what I mean? So it's still a chance. Not all insurances do it. And I'm not saying your insurance will do it, but it is something to think about as well. I just decided, listen, I'm not gonna wait for that. I'm not gonna do that. I didn't wanna go through it. It just sounded too messy for me. My insurance is already messy as it is. I was not going for it. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna pay for it out of pocket. It's something I've been wanting. I already spoke with all seven of the little me's in my head and we all determined that this is the best thing for me to do um is to get a breast reduction and just, and just i was like fuck it i'm just gonna pay for it so the total cost of my breast reduction is thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars that i'm paying out of pocket i gave them a thousand dollar deposit um when i booked the surgery because that's what you have to do and then i think i paid Four thousand in cash, and then the remainder eight I did a credit for that I pay monthly. So um, that's also optional. You can do it that way. You could take out a care credit for basically anything. I decided to do it that way because I had a little bit extra fun. So I already did my pre-op appointment. It really wasn't long. We just they basically discussed any other questions that I had for him. I didn't really have many questions. He just went over the basics that I'm pretty sure you've seen a million to one if you're watching this breast reduction videos. So you're aware of the complications that can happen with the breast reduction. Um, so we just basically went over that, which we went over at my consultation. But what? I'm yawning so much. I'm so tired, guys. I've been up all day. Um, which we went over already at my consultation. But basically the fact that, you know, breastfeeding might be a 50-50 chance. Um, I'm a mom. I'm not a mom. I'm a girl who wants to breastfeed when she is a mom. But um, I had to come to terms that you can't, you know, have the cake and eat it too. So, um, is that the saying? You want the cake and eat it too? Oh, I'm gonna sound so stupid. You guys know what I mean. Like, some, you just cannot have the best of both worlds. Like, this is not Hannah Montana. This is real life. So, if I have to give up one thing for another i would be okay with it like it's not the end of the world but it's something that i would want and i hope you know that it works out for me because i, I really actually want to breastfeed um your nipple sensation is another thing that we discussed you know some women lose their nipple sensation for good some people get it back 50 50 some women get it back regular some people get it back way more than regular 150 percent. you know what i mean that's another um symptom and sign that you have to look out for too because if that's important to you, then you want to know about those things as well. Same thing um, with the nipple. Sometimes your nipple can die and um, you won't have one. So that's something that you also have to understand that it's... Pro I don't think it's really common, but 
I mean, maybe it's or maybe it's not talked about but it's something that can happen so it's something that you also should look into as well because you want to make sure that you're knowing every possibility because you don't want to come out of the surgery and they inform you when you're like I didn't know about this or you know you weren't okay with you know that this can happen so um you just got to come to terms with all those things because you're you know you're putting your life on the line you're going on the anesthesia I mean I'm being really dramatic but it's still an open surgery like they're really close to your heart I feel like and I feel like you're you just you never know like you want to be careful so um pre-op and everything's already done I've done all my medical clearances um now I'm just really preparing for me being home for a while and this is not something that I'm used to because I'm like pretty much always on the go so being able to be home for x amount of days and not you know being out it's actually gonna be really hard for me I feel like so in the meantime I will be vlogging the entire thing I did vlog prior granted like I said I don't know if you guys are gonna see that footage or not or even this footage to be honest um okay so um obviously now that it's the night before I don't know exactly what you're gonna need for your surgery but I did get a few items that I think will help alleviate the pain and discomfort during the surgery so first and foremost I would recommend to all of my young women of color anybody protective style all the way put something in your head that you don't have to touch because when you think about it you're not gonna be able to put your hands over your head I don't know how long um, I've been watching videos but you know everybody's different it seems as if so you know maybe I'm different it may be faster for me it might be slower I don't know but this to me is just something that ooh, Jesus these butterfly locks to me are something that's cute, simple, out the way. I literally just finished them a couple of hours ago. Short, I could put it up in a bun, I could throw a bonnet on, something like that. I think everybody should put their hair in a protective style. Um, if you don't wear protective styles, then, I mean, a nice bun, I guess. I don't know, because you're not going to be able to touch your hair as much. Unless you got somebody in the house that can do your hair for you, but for my young girls of color and things like that and wear protective styles, put your hair in something that obviously you're not going to be you know messing with all the time other than that um i did get some breast reduction pillows oh i have three breast reduction pillows i have one that i'll show you this one because i can't show you the other one i'm not picking that one up so i have this one this is supposed to sit on the front and it clips around the back it holds like your phone remote ice pack and it has one on this side too so you can flip flop but i already washed everything and it has like the little indents for your arms here because I'm obviously gonna be in some pain or something so this is supposed to sit here so that way when you're laying down on your back because as you know you cannot lay on your stomach and I'm a stomach sleeper so this is gonna be very hard for me but I read that you cannot sleep on your stomach for four weeks minimum so I'm gonna follow my surgeon's orders directly because every surgeon has different ideas and everything you know this is their work so they know how to handle their work they're gonna give you a take care package for what they've done you know what I mean so everybody's gonna vary but um yeah, this is going to help me with moving my arms around and being comfortable, hopefully not rolling over. I don't want to be rolling over. Um, and then I also got a wedge pillow that looks like a Swiss cheese. It's like 45 degree angle because I don't think I'm going to be really flat on my back at first. I think it's like angled at first and then you'll slowly start to gradually get down to just being on your back. And then soon you'll be able to get on your side and then to your front. Um, and then I got one more cooling pillow, but I don't think that's really for me. I think my boyfriend bought that for himself. So, we're not gonna count that one, but just in case. Um, I also went to the store and I got baby wipes because I also do not know how long I'm gonna be without a shower. From what I'm hearing, it's been like, some girls are saying two days, I see some girls say five days. So baby wipes to me are something I can use to just wipe down my areas, make sure that I'm not stinking the entire house up. I also don't know if I'm gonna have drains. So that's something that's sensitive, fragrance-free, gentle, that I can use to wipe, clean up the area around. Because, you know, I don't wanna be, oh, the clothes on the laundry, I have to get them out. Um, I don't wanna be stink, especially in my space, because, you know, I'm not gonna smell it, but if I'm closed up in my room, Everybody who's coming in to see me will smell it, and I don't want that. So I got some extra baby wipes. I also got these plastic piercings. Ooh, my face is breaking out bad. I just finished my menstrual, guys, and this always happens. So I only put them in the two here. I mean, the three here, the two up here, and the one right here. These are all um, already healed, and my belly button is healed. I've had that since I was 16. So, but these, this one is healed already, but these two are taking forever to heal the cartilages. So, um, I bought the plastic piercings because you obviously cannot wear piercings when you're on the surgical table. So I bought those so that way the hole won't close and they still have something in it. Um, actually a friend told me about this. I didn't even know these were a thing. I got this from my friend. 
so, well, she didn't buy it, I mean, but like, I got this idea, like when I saw the jewelry, I was like, oh, that's so smart. Um, but yeah, so all my jewelry's off, my necklace, my bracelets, like, I feel naked right now, but those are all off. Um, next that we got is, I only got one button down shirt, um, only because I couldn't find any extra ones that I liked. The other ones that I found at the store were just rompers. Um, but I'm only gonna need a couple because I'm just gonna keep, I have a washer and dryer, so I'm just gonna keep rotating them and washing them and stuff like that. Um, I'm not gonna buy too many because I'm not gonna wear them after this. Um, they're just only for this reason because you're not gonna be able to lift your arms above your head. So you want to be able to buy something that you can button up in the front. And I'm probably gonna wear it to the surgery along with some sweatpants and some Crocs. Um, also didn't purchase surgical, surgical bras. Um, only because I found this website and it seems that they have great reviews but I just don't want to buy something that's too tight or too small and I don't know what size I'm going to be or my measurements until obviously the day of the surgery because your measurements might change. There's no specific cup size for a breast reduction. They're literally going to eyeball it to their best ability to proportion with your body of a roundabout, you know, that option. There's no like cup C and then they're going to like put it and measure it and go, yeah, this is it. Like, because everybody varies everybody's back size is different everybody's proportion of their body is different so they're gonna go off the proportion of your body also another thing <laughs> is to have your medication as well i'm, I'm so giddy right now because i'm so nervous i have really bad anxiety so um it's to have your medication ready you want to make sure you want to make sure that you get all the medications that you need prior to your um surgery you don't want to wait so close of i have everything that i have here my painkillers and my antibiotics they prescribe me antibiotics that i also have to take every day for two weeks to prevent any infections or if there is an infection that way it'll clear itself out um which is also really good so okay guys so i hope you enjoyed this portion of the video or this video i don't know how i'm gonna do this entire thing yet um and i will see you guys after the surgery bye hello guys so it is surgery day. It's, oh my gosh. Say hi to mama love. But we're at surgery day and we're on our way to the surgery center. I have to be there. At, at first it's 11.30, then they changed to 10.30. But the packet said to be there like 30 to 45 minutes before. So we're gonna get there around 10. Um, it's currently like 9. 24, we'll be there at 9.45. And um, we'll start the preparation. So I have my bag, my surgery bag, my Telfie Z period, and then my surgery pillow for the ride back. And then, okay, for the ride back so I can put it in my... <laughs> I went through the seat. For the ride back so the seatbelt won't be on my breast too hard. Um, and my lips, my lips look so dry. Because you're hungry and thirsty. That's exactly what they look so great. No matter what angle it is, how much um, chap I put on. And I drank so much water yesterday and it still looks dry. So, surgeon came. We got some markings done. I'm not going to show, like, you know too deep but markings are done we decided on a full c um so he's gonna go with whatever his generic is but i agree that i would rather be too small than too big i think i've had my fun with big breasts i don't really want it anymore so a c would be perfect for me i think they're like just the right amount of they're big but not too big you know what i mean um they're like an average size um but if they were a little bit smaller i wouldn't be upset about it i just don't want to go from like a h to a triple d i don't want to be too big kind of over the big stuff so i'd rather be if i had to be i'd rather be smaller but um so we already agreed we spoke about everything i'm uber duper excited guys so the surgery should start at one o'clock um it's about 12 15 now i think they should come grab me in probably like the next 20 30 minutes to take me over to the room start preparing and um yeah so i'll see you guys after Mommy's in the bathroom. Relax. I'm in the bathroom. Okay. Aww. Oh, wait, come. Mommy. It's okay. Don't cry. Why are you crying? <laughs> come on, hold my hand. Anesthesia. Yeah. Makes you emotional. Um, how does the drainage work? She knows how to she do it. She knows how to do yeah, it. Yeah, we showed her, yeah. And I she went repeated to it school. back. She knows. Are you sure? Yes, I want to. If any doctor call you guys, right? Yeah, we'll be yeah. here until 6, 7 tonight. Okay. Um, there's an emergency phone number off. Yes. Boo's here? No, Boo. No, Boo is not here. <laughs> no. Boo's home. You're right. We're going to bring you home. Right. 
Come on. Mommy, right here. I didn't go nowhere. I'm to help with the throat, throat too. And we gave her throat losses. Yeah, no chicken. It's a no little bit spicy or greasy. Or no barbecue chicken. How you feel? It hurt. It hurt? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Well, but this is what you wanted, right? No. No? No. <laughs> now she goes say no. You want me to seat back some more? So you can relax? I need ice on my boob there. Well, we got the okay. ice pack. You we got the ice pack. So we got everything. Take a nap. Close your eyes. You can't sleep. You can't sleep? Are you already sleeping? Ow! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm driving very slow. Oh, my camera. You wanna hold it? No. Say hi to your YouTube friends. Hi, YouTube friends. <laughs> YouTube friends. Say bye, you YouTube friends. Like bye, YouTube friends. Oh, Jayla. Hello, what's up? Alyssa just texted me. Oh, what's the text you? Let me see. Oh, Someone she said. misses me. Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hi, Corey. Hi, friends. All that's right, Jada. Stop crying. <laughs> no, that's not Jada. That's a whistle. No, Jada texted me. All right. Oh. There's no reason to cry, though. Hi, friend. Though. I feel it. I feel pain. Hey guys, you said 6.40? 6.44. It's 6.44 in the morning. My surgery was yesterday, but I was in so much pain, I didn't really get to um, record. Um, my throat is really, really sore because they put a breathing tube down my throat. Um, or I don't know what the tube was for. Maybe it was a breathing tube or maybe it was a um, for the anesthesia. I don't remember. Um, what happened? What are you looking for? No. It's all the way in the back of the bed. You might as well get the broom. And try to sweep it out. So, um, here they are. I have drains as well. So, um, I have to drain out the drains. Um, they didn't tell me really how much, just once it gets to halfway. But the right one, this one's been draining. This one has not been draining really. So, um, the nurse is going to call me probably in a couple hours. And I'm going to have to let her know. Because I want her to know that they're not really... Well, the left one's not draining. Unless I just don't have the fluid, but they're really hard. So, like, see, I don't know, y'all. So, my throat hurts. I can literally touch my uvula. Like, my uvula is really on my tongue. Like, literally on my tongue. Like, in the back, I can touch it. Yeah, I should have took the pain meds, but I didn't. I was like, nah, I'm okay. And my boyfriend was here, so he's like, you should take it. And I'm like, nah, I'm fine. Like, I'm good. I ain't got no pain. And now the pain is kicking and like my back is hurting, my neck is hurting, my chest is hurting. I can't even like talk too fast without getting out of breath. So I should have, I should have took it, but it's fine. I'm going to keep up with the regimen now. So, um, it's done. Mm -hmm. They have me eating some soup. And, um, yeah, I can't really lift my arms too much. This is technically day one post-op because yesterday was a surgery. So this is day one post-op. Um, I'm going to keep you guys posted as the days go. What happened? I'm going to keep you guys posted as the days go on. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and when I should start feeling better. Hopefully right now because I'm tired of this pain already. So, bye guys. Good morning guys. It is now day two post-op. <clears throat> I'm able to start walking around. Um, I haven't been draining much still, like yesterday. There's not really much drainage, um, so I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but they told me. Oh, sorry, guys. No, I take it slow. I just had some fruit for breakfast, but they told me that I won't drain as much if I'm not, like, moving around. So I've been trying to, like, get up and walk around. I literally just started, like, getting up and moving around and stuff like that, so, um, I've just been laying down all day. I'm trying to stand up for the most part. I've been up for maybe about like 10 minutes. Um, I can go to the bathroom. It's still a little hard to wipe myself because I can't reach. Like, I can reach the front, but I can't go all the way to the back. So, um, my mommy has to wipe me. <laughs> um, but everything else, I think I've, I've been doing pretty okay that I can do by myself. I can reach and grab my drinks and grab my phone and, um, 
I could reach a little bit, but not too much. But I've just been trying to keep everything close. But um, I've actually just been getting really, really rock hard in the press. This is like what I look like. So today's Saturday, right? Yes, and my um post op is on Tuesday. So I have about three more days in with this drain, with these drains. Praying that it goes by fast because I want these out. And I kind of really want to see what they look like. And I want to take a shower. <sighs> okay. Y'all, I'm telling you, you'll be drained. I've been watching videos and girls are like, yeah, I was good by day two. I don't know who and what magician they had, but I'm not good right now. Um, Maybe it's because... Uh, Y'all, you can see I'm literally getting out of breath. I I run around a lot, so I'm not used to like being in the house all day. Like I'm always on the go, I'm always out. So I'm always driving somewhere, I'm always going somewhere. So for this, like to be like at home all day, resting, like this is really new to me. So I was even planning on going to work in like a week, and now I'm like, shit, I don't even know if it's gonna, I'm gonna make it because I'm only on day two. So hopefully we'll see how I feel by day five. I can stand up a little bit taller. Um, but yeah, I I like what I see. I'm really flat chested. But look at all my beautiful flowers. And I got a edible arrangements, a strawberry one in the fridge. And thank you to everybody who sent me stuff and like sent a lot of kind wishes. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. <laughs> So I'm gonna drain out my drain. This is how they taught me to do it um, before I went into surgery. Not every surgeon works with drains, but mine in particular does if needed. So she told me that, I think I'm gonna be finished soon because she said it's gonna start going from like bright red to, no, I think bright to pink to yellow to clear. And right now, like this is like brightish red pink to yellow so I'm assuming I'm almost done but I haven't even been draining so where's the glass cup what glass cup oh so this is my good drain this one's been draining so I have to take an alcohol pad they said and you're gonna squeeze it really really tight and then you're just gonna push oof Fuck, I hate this. So see, now my drains are clear. I don't really have much fluid, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm not gonna touch it. I gotta see how much. It's still, it just hit close to 25 milliliters. You still hit 20 right? Mm-hmm. I hit close 25, like, I will put like 20 milliliters. Bright red. <clears throat> it's a dull red. It's not bright like the first time I did it. And then you just gotta take it. I could dump it? Yes. I need this to cool. And then now when you close it, it works by suction, so I close and I have to squeeze it. And then close the top, and then that way it'll suck from the tube. And then I just pin them on back. Ah, and that's how you drain number one. I have Ranisha helping me yesterday. She was scared. I need you to pull this one down. Squeeze this one. Do it really hard. Don't, don't let go. Keep going. I'm gonna keep pulling the other way. You got it in the cup? See it right there. So something's yeah. stuck in this. I don't know. I think it's a clot. It could have been dried up from sitting in the tube. I don't know. Me, maybe. I have to call the nurse anyway. So. Yeah. Let me try and break it up. Yeah, it's stuck in here, guys. So 
don't know. We just gonna record whatever we got. All right, get the thingy. This one's not even draining. Like, look. That's what I've been telling you since yesterday. You told her that? Yeah, I told her it wasn't draining. She said I wasn't moving around, so. Hey, you got a stuck with blood clot here. This is probably like five. Like, anywhere between zero and five. Like, put zero to five. Like, it was really nothing. It's not even coming another thing. Today is also the day I started my antibiotics. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, so I did antibiotic in the morning. Along with my four vitamin pills, technically, I'm taking Vitamedica, I think. It's um, Brolamine, and then three morning pills. Hmm. And then I have three night pills, plus the antibiotic. So in total, I'm taking about five pills in the morning and four pills at night. I just took my four pills already because... Um, I eat. You have to take them when you eat. And um, it's like, like 10 o'clock at night. It's 10, 10 21. So I don't think I'll be able to go to sleep. I have not slept all day. I have not taken a nap all day. Maybe I'll be able to go to sleep. If not, I'm really going to be up. I took a pain medication to try to help me go to sleep a little bit and help with the back pain. But it really didn't help. It helped with the back pain, but it didn't send me to sleep. Like I was still up. So um, I just been up walking around all day, draining. That was my fluid collection for the day, which is really a lot compared to the girls I'm seeing online. They're having, like, a lot of fluid. I don't really have much fluid, so I don't doubt that he'll take it out Tuesday. We have to drain. For what? It's time for our nightly drain. Because I'm not draining a lot, so I'm just doing it in the morning and night if there's liquid. I'm laying down now because I'm nauseous and I just ate. I've been up walking around. So, um... My boob, too, is draining more than it was earlier. Remember, it was really not draining. Well, they're draining, so. See? This is boob one, and this is boob two. So, we're going to drain them. We're going to start boob one. Boob one is like. That's a dull red. What color? No. That looks dull. You know what dull is? What does dull mean? That means like faded, baby. Exactly, that is a faded color, is it not? No, this is a bright color. Okay, maybe because it's a bottle, I'm seeing it wrong. So, like brightest red? Yeah, I guess. Or regular red? It's like a bright red. Like pinkish bright red. I don't know how many milligrams, though. I was given like 10 to 20 milligrams in here. I'm passing the cup so I can pour it out. I, I cannot reach that far. This one's a dark red. And it's exactly 25. It's exactly 25. You go, you wrote it down? Mm -hmm. Dark red, exactly 25? I'm writing dark red. I'm writing 25 right now. You see? Um, this one is like Good morning, guys. No. Good morning, guys. Today is day three that I'm post op. Um, nothing much really happened yesterday. It's just been me in bed. I haven't even gone to my appointments. My appointment again is on Tuesday, so today's Sunday. I still have Monday, and then Tuesday I'll be at the um, post op appointment. But um, I've just been relaxing. I didn't really sleep much last night. I haven't slept really i mainly slept all day like for post-op day one and well the day of the surgery and then the next post-op i didn't sleep yesterday really like i didn't have a nap 
woke up at around maybe 4 a.m. So I was asleep for about six hours and I've been up um, since 4 a.m. I probably won't go back to sleep. I don't think I am. Maybe if I eat and take my vitamins, I might go back for a little bit, but I don't see it happening. So, um, and I can't wait to get these drains out because they're uh, so annoying and so uncomfortable. But, um, hopefully they should be out by Tuesday. Hopefully if he deems that they're, you know, good to be taken out. And it's, um, it's just one block sticking up for me. But, um, yep, and tomorrow's Halloween and I'll be in here healing. Um, not really excited about that, but, uh, yeah, so, but, um, yeah, everything has been going fine. I'm actually able to move around a lot more. I can sit up and lay down without like excruciating pain like I can still feel like sore but it's not like a lot of pain to where like oh my gosh like, I'm about to pass out um it still feels tight up here the bra feels really tight in the front not really in the back so it caused me to hunch my shoulders a lot because I can't really stand up up straight but I'm still padded and bandaged a lot so I don't expect to be standing up straight maybe until like Tuesday but um I can't wait to see them I really want I really want to take this bra off because I really really want to see but granted i have to wait so i'm not gonna take it off but i cannot wait to see them i cannot wait you guys have no idea hello guys today is oh, i think day four day five post-op i didn't record yesterday because nothing really happened again i was just home um resting so today we're on our way to the pre-op appointment um, which at 9 45 it's 9 3 right now <laughs> Um, hopefully they're gonna take these drains out because I'm about sick and tired of them. Um, I don't know what else is gonna happen at the pre-op. We'll see once we get there. But, um, yeah, I'm starting to feel much better. I can start to move around way more. I wouldn't say, like, back to the way I was. I think yesterday I probably was moving around a little bit too much because now my arms are very, like, sore-ish. So I think I was moving around just a tad bit too much, a little more than I was supposed to, but, um... I'm still okay. Like, I think I, I probably did overdo it, though. Like, moving around and getting everything for myself and stuff. So, um, but other than that, I feel very good. I still don't, haven't used the pain medication. I don't think I used them since post-op day three. So, that's a good thing. But, um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. My drains have just been getting less and less. I don't drain as much anymore like I was. I don't, um, I'm not draining as much anymore like I was. I was, like, hitting 25, like, milliliters every time but now I'm just like zero to five zero to ten like you know it's just been going left down and down so I'm assuming that that's a good thing and I could take these off um and I just have to talk to him because I feel like I get a lot of like nerve tingles in my breast I don't know if that's because I always keep my room so cold and maybe my breast shouldn't be cold or the nerves are trying to like put themselves back together or something I don't know but um I don't think it's a problem I'm gonna ask them it's probably just healing you know healing does weird things to you so um yeah we're just gonna see what happens once we get there so you know we get there good morning guys so i definitely forgot to record um yesterday after we left the appointment um i was just probably too excited to show everyone my breasts so they took the stuffings out like the plastic as you can see it's slight blood um dried blood on the bra but um i have to order another one which i was supposed to do but i was waiting to see like how it was going to start dropping because i didn't want to order one that was too big or too small and it was really really tight or really, really loose so and there's some gauze on the side that's where the drains came out and that blood that's already on the side that was there already so and i have a band-aid on this side but the drains absolutely long like they were so long and i knew that they were long because um, I watch a lot of videos of people getting them taken out, but that hurt. Like, to get those things taken out, it hurt because there's, like, a small little wound that they make. And it was probably, like, this big. Like, it was a straight line. And it was in there. So now, he said, I'm, I'm able to shower. Um, I've just been literally wiping myself down um, the past five days. I haven't showered because I had the drains in and I can't shower because I can't get the drains wet or anything else, you know, with them inside. So, yesterday was the first time I took a shower and um i just didn't wash the breast part and i couldn't wash like right here because of the drain hole because they didn't close it obviously it, it closed itself 
but um I can't get like water and stuff inside of it and the bacteria from your body and stuff so I washed every other limb except from here over but everything my neck arms back um my sides were all washed and I slept like a baby I don't even think I slept <laughs> so good before um and the pain has been going down I more so have nerve pain like I think I'm just like really really nervy if that even makes sense like the cold, everything. Like, my breasts are really, really sensitive. Like, even probably more than before. But, it, like I said, I think it's because the nerves are trying to regenerate, like, recuperate themselves. I don't know if that, like, is a thing. But that's what it feels like. So, other than that, I'm very much happy with my results. I can't wait to start trying on my clothes and things like that. I just want them to get a tad bit softer because they're still hard. I have another appointment in two weeks. Let's see. They're starting, they're starting to get soft at the top. But I feel like I touched up here so much that um, they're probably starting to get soft anyway. But look at how small my breasts are. Oh my gosh. If you look at my old videos or even at my Instagram, you know my breasts were big. I was a 36H. I was huge. <sighs> they took a total of four pounds out, which is not a lot for like a lot of people that I've um seen. But for me, that was a lot because my breasts were really long. I will say my stomach looks a lot bigger, but um, it's because literally I've been seeing breast over my stomach all these years. I've never even seen like this part of my stomach. Like when there's like the bra off, all of this is exposed. Like that part was always covered by my breast. So, you know, once I like raised them up and things like that, but they were always covered. So it's like, wow, well, I actually have a whole torso. Um, as for my posture, I'm still trying to get there because... I mean, I don't know what else to expect. Like, my posture is not going to be the best um, just right out of surgery because, obviously, I'm in pain now. So, but I'm getting there with everything. I want to know when I'm going to be able to start going to the gym because I want to lose my little pooch that I have here. Um, well, I probably always had it, but it was more prominent now that my upper body is more smaller than it used to be. So, now I'm able to properly see my body as such because I swear to you not, I, I kid you not, I really feel like... My breasts are the reason that I had really bad body dysmorphia. Like, I swore I was so, 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 so huge. And now, I looked in the mirror and I actually saw a figure for once. Like, I never saw the sides of my, my waist here. And now, I was like, I saw a figure. I was like, I have a figure. But I could never see that. So, I'm really excited. So, now I'm ready to get back in the gym. But I don't know when I can get back. I'm actually going to call the nurses and see when I can get back in the gym. But... I don't think there's anything else really to discuss. Like, I'm almost a week post-op tomorrow. I would make a full week. Um, and I'll probably do, like, a closing out video because there's nothing else really to see. I've just been relaxing and everything, taking my medications. My drains are out now. Soon I'll be going back to work on Monday. So, it's so, like, it's almost over. And it's like the journey just begun and it's almost over. So, yep. I don't know. All right, guys. So, bye.